So good morning. Welcome back to JPC Special Talk. Share Campbell. Well, this morning, it's Friday, it's Prophecy Friday. We're going to cover Daniel's chapter 8 and, and chapter 9. Before we get into our Prophecy Friday study, let's start out with a small prayer. We're going to ask the Lord. We're going to ask Him to open up the eyes of our mind. We can understand His teachings in Scripture. In the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Shine to hearts, O loving Master, the pure line for divine knowledge. And open the eyes in our mind. Though we may understand your teachings in Scripture, help us to apply what we learn after having conquered similar desires. We may pursue a spiritual way of life, thanking and doing all things that are pleasing to you. Your Christ, our God, your light, and to you we give glory. Father, Son, Holy Spirit, both now and forever, and the sages. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, forgive us our trespasses, forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. But yours is the key to the power, the glory of the Father, and the Son, Holy Spirit, both now and forever, and the sages. Amen. Oh, how lovely laws of meditation, all day words of land to my feet, like to my path. For it is written, man shall not live by bread alone, but by, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. Again, again, my mother and brothers and sisters are those who hear the word of God and do it. Lord Jesus Christ, under God, have mercy on me, a sinner. Lord Jesus Christ, under God, have mercy on me, a sinner. Lord Jesus Christ, under God, have mercy on me, a sinner. The Lord is our shepherd. Good morning. Welcome back. So great is his faithfulness. Indeed, the spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. Starting out here in Daniel chapter 8, the ram and the goat. We're going to read a little bit, kind of break it down. Shouldn't take too long. We're going to go slow enough, but also kind of fast enough, but at the same time, really want to understand what's being said so in the name of the father son and the holy spirit so the ram and the goat so daniel chapter 8 so in the third year a bell in the third year of belshazzar's reign a vision was real was revealed to me daniel after was was revealed to me daniel after the one that appeared to me the first time i was in shishan in the palace in the province of Il elam and I saw the vision that was by the Uli River. Then I lifted up my eyes and looked, and behold, one ram stood before the Uli and had horns. The horns were high, but one was higher than the other, and the higher one came up last. I saw the ram pushing westward, northward, and southward, and no animal could withstand him or deliver him from his power. But he did according to his will and became great. So we're starting verse 5. Listen attentively. We read to verse 5. We're going to stop at verse 14 and talk about that. So in verse 5, As I was considering this, behold, a male goat came from the southwest across the surface of the earth. Without touching the ground, and the goat had a notable horn between his eyes. But he came to the ram that had the horns, which I saw standing before the Uli. And he ran at him with furious power. I saw him running at the ram and attacking him savagely. He struck the ram and broke both his horns. There was no strength in the ram to withstand him, but he cast him to the ground and trampled him. There was no one that could deliver the ram from his power. So the male goat became exceedingly great, and when he became strong, his large horn was broken, and the four horns came up under him toward the four winds of heaven. Then from one of them, one strong horn came forth, strong and exceedingly great, toward the south and the east and toward the host. He exalted himself to the host of the heaven and some of the heavenly hosts and stars fell to the earth and he trampled them underfoot until the chief captain delivered the host of captives for because of him the sacrifice was thrown down and it came about that he prospered but the sanctuary was too was to become desolate for the sin offering was offered as long as there was sacrifice but he cast righteousness to the ground and although he did not and although he did this he prospered then i heard one of the saints speaking to another saint said to that one speaking how long will the vision stand and the sacrifice be taken away and the sin offering which was offered be desolate and the sanctuary and hosts be trampled underfoot he replied to him until two thousand and three hundred days of evening and morning then the sanctuary shall be cleansed in the father son and the holy spirit so we see in verses 5 through 14 it's talking about alexander the great right so it's talking about him right so what happens to Alexander the Great? His rule gets broken, right? 
verse 8. So the male goat became exceedingly great. And when he became strong, his large horn was broken. And four horns came up under him toward the four winds of heaven. Right? So, so Alexander the Great's rule is finally broken. Verse 8. He was only 33 years old. Right? So young. Very young. So what happened was his four generals. Right? His four generals. That were the four horns. Right? So it's the four generals divided up what? His empire among themselves. They divided up in Egypt, Asia, Asia Minor, and Macedonia. Right? The strong horn. So in verse 9, talk about a strong horn, right? Then from one of them, one strong horn came forth, strong and exceedingly great, toward the south and the east, and toward the host. Right? So the strong horns to represent Antios and Anthony's, right? If I said that right, who took the solicited kingdom in 175 BC. He put an end to temple sacrifices and set up a statue of Jupiter. And the holy temple in Jerusalem. Let's continue reading. Right? So I'm going to start at verse 15. And I'm going to read the rest of it, end at verse 27. And then we'll talk about it from there. So starting at verse 15, Gabriel re reveals the vision. Right. So it came about that when I, Daniel, saw the vision and sought to understand it. Then, behold, the vision of a man stood before me. I heard the voice of this man in the midst of the Uli. And he called and said, Gabriel, cause that man to understand the vision. Thus he came and stood near where I was standing. And when he came, I was, ast I was astonished and fell on my face. And he said to me, understand, son of man, for the vision is yet for the end of time. Hmm. Now when he spoke with me, I fell on my face to the ground, but he touched me and, and, and stood me on my feet. Then he said, Behold, I will make you I will make known to you what shall take place in the last time of wrath, for the vision is yet for, for the end of time. The ram you saw and his horns is the king of Mede, Mede uh, the king of Medes and the Persians. The male goat is the king of the Greeks, and the great horn between his eyes and the first king. When that horn is broken and the four horns stand under it, four kings from that nation shall rise, but not with its might. Then in the later time of their kingdom, when the sins are fulfilled, a king shall rise shameless and countless, and he will understand riddles. His strength will be mighty, and he, and he, shall, destroy, and he shall destroy terribly. He shall prosper and take action and destroy the mighty and the holy people. The yoke... Of his chain shall prosper. There will be treachery in, in his hand. He shall magnify himself in his heart. He shall destroy many with deceit and stand for the destruction of many. He will crush them like an egg in his hand. Now the vision of this evening and the morning that was told is true. Therefore seal the vision because it refers to many days in the future. Then I, Daniel, fell asleep and was sick for days. After this I arose and and did the king's business, and I wondered about the vision, but no one understood it in the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. So nobody understood. So Daniel's vision occurred in about 551 BC. Right? The ram. So in verse 3, so we go all the way back to verse 3. So the ram. Then I lifted up my eyes and looked. And behold, one ram stood before the Uli, and, his, and had horns. The horns were high, but one was higher than the other, and the higher one came up last. So that ram, in verse 3, is repre representing Darius and the rule of the Medes and the Persians. Let's go back, let's go to verse 20. The ram you saw with his horns is the king of Medes and Persians. Beautiful which ended with the death of Belshazzar in 538 B.C. The male goat, let's go back to verse 5. And I was considering this. Behold, a male goat came from the southwest across the surface of the earth without touching the ground, and the goat had a notable horn between his eyes. So the male goat, verse 5, represents the conquest of the Greeks. Let's look at, let's read verse 21. The male goat in the, is the king of the Greeks. And the gray horn between its eyes is the first king. Beautiful. 
So it was the, con the conquest of the Greeks up until the time of the Romans, about 64 B.C. <clears throat> so we keep reading. So the temple was cleansed. Right, verse 14. Let's go back to verse 14. He replied to him, until 2,000... Until 2,300 days of evening and morning, then the, the sanctuary shall be cleansed, right? So the temple, sanctuary shall be cleansed. Verse 14, under Judas Maccabees, right? What the Maccabean, was that the, the Maccabean rebellion? So, so it was under Judas Maccabeus after he had led the Jews to victory over what? The Syrians. St. Jerome says that most church commentators see a partial fulfillment of these events. In the persecution of Antioch, but that the passage also points to the Antichrist. All right, so listen attentively. The king who shall rise, let's look at verse 23. Then, in the later time of their kingdom, when the sins are fulfilled, a king shall rise shameless in countenance, and he will understand riddles. So the Antichrist himself is a type of all those who raise themselves up against Christ. Thus, his downfall at Christ's second coming symbolizes the final destruction of all evil and the realization of Christ's eternal kingdom. All right? So let's look at let's take a reading from 2 Thessalonians. Right? So 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. Second Thessalonians chapter 2, verses 3 through 12. So 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verses 3 through 12. It says, Let no one deceive you by any means, for that day will not come unless the falling away comes first. And the man of sin is revealed in the son of perdition, who opposes and exalts himself above all, is called God, or that is worship, so that he sits as God in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. Do you remember that when I was still with you, I told you these things? And now you know what is restraining, that he may be revealed in his own time. For the mystery of lawlessness is already at work. Only he who now restrains will do so until he's taken out of the way. And when the lawless one will be revealed, whom the Lord will consume with the breath of his mouth and destroy with the brightness of his coming. The coming of the lawless one is according to the working of Satan, with all the power, signs, and lying wonders. And with all unrighteous deception among those who perish because they did not receive the love of truth. And then they might be saved. And for this reason God will send them a strong delusion. That they should believe the lie. That they may all be condemned. Who do not believe the truth. But had, but had pleasure in unrighteousness. In the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. So while we are warned against what predicting the day of the Lord. There will be signs preceding his coming. St. Paul instructs that the Thessalonians concerning two things. One, a general falling away. Verse 3, what apostasy will take first. From Christ and the church, the revealing of the man and the sin, son of perdition. Verse 3, who is the Antichrist. Who is the Antichrist of 1 and 2, John, similar to the dragon, right? And the beast of Revelation chapter 3. The lawless one is... Is described in the Old Testament, Daniel chapter 7, verse 25, Daniel chapter 8, verse 25, and Daniel chapter 11, verse 36. See, that's why we're, we're doing Daniel. So it's mentioned by Christ in Matthew chapter 24, verse 15, and discussed by Paul on his first visit to Thessalonica here in verse 5, 2 Thessalonians. The devil incites divisions among people so they are they will readily receive the Antichrist when he comes. The man of sin is a counterfeit Messiah. With a counterfeit kingdom, right? So we'll start out also, there will be a false, they will create a false trinity, right? We'll keep learning. He exalts himself above God, performs deceptive miracles, wonders through satanic power. He will fool the unrighteous into following him and will be removed from power by Christ himself at the second coming. Paul instructs that when the world gets worse, Christians must not be distressed or deceived, but rather preserve as good stewards. Right, continuing faith, right? So who is the restrainer? Well, Christ is the restrainer, right? Because the Antichrist will be given what the power when that time comes. 
So what that means is that when it, it's time for him to be revealed and for his time, Christ pulls back. And so the Antichrist will have full reign, if that makes sense. So Christ will just pull back, right? That's what it means, pull back the restrainer, right? And that's when the worst tribulation will begin, right? But we see in verse 26 in Daniel chapter 8, it says, Now the vision of the evening and the morning that was told is true. Therefore, seal the vision because it refers to many days in the future. The seal vision, the things, therefore, which of old were sealed, are now by the grace of God, the Lord, all open to the saints. For he, for, for he was himself the perfect seal, and the church is the key. But to Christ it was not said, seal, but loose. The things bound of old and ordered, that by his grace we might know the will of the Father and believe upon him who he has sent for the salvation of men. Jesus our Lord, Saint Hepatitis said that. In the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. We're moving on to Daniel chapter 9. Okay. So we're going to break this down. We're going to read, starting in Daniel chapter 9, the first 11 verses. Daniel prays for the people. So in the first year of Darius, the son of Erxes, of the seed of Medes, who reigned over the kingdom of the Chedeleans in the first year of his reign. I, Daniel, understood in the books the number of years when the word of the Lord to Jeremiah the prophet would be fulfilled for, for the desolation of Jerusalem when it came to 70 years. Then I set my face towards the, to the Lord God to seek him in prayer and supplication with fasting, sackcloth, and ashes. So I prayed to the Lord my God and made, and made confession. I said, O Lord, great, and marvelous. You keep your covenant and mercy with those who love you and keep your commandments. We sinned and did, we sinned and did wrong. We acted lawlessly, fell away, and turned away from your commandments and judgments. Neither did we obey your servants, the prophets who spoke in your name to our kings, our rulers, our fathers, and to all the people in the land. O oh Lord, righteousness belongs to you, but the shame of faith belongs to us, as it is today to the men of Judah, to those who dwell in Jerusalem, and to all of Israel, those near and far, and all the earth, whoever the earth, and wherever you scatter them, and their and their faithful and their faithfulness by which they rejected you. O Lord, shame of faith belongs to us, our kings, our rulers, and to our fathers who sinned against you. To the Lord our God belong mercy and forgiveness, whereas we fell away. We have not obeyed the voice of the Lord our God to walk in His laws, which he set before us by the hands of his servants, the prophets. Yes, all of Israel transgressed your law and turned aside as not to obey your voice. Therefore, the curse and the oath written in the law of Moses, the servant of God, has come upon us because we sinned against you. In the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. So in verses 3 and 5, it says, Then I set my face toward the Lord God to seek him in prayer. And supplication with fasting, sackcloth, and ashes. So I prayed to the Lord my God and made confession. I said, O Lord God, great and, mar and, mar and marvelous, who keep your covenant and mercy with those who love you and keep your commandments. We sinned and did wrong. We acted lawlessly, fell away, and turned away from your commandments and judgments. We sinned, right? In the spirit of true, what answer? What the, okay. In the spirit of true intercessory prayer, Daniel takes on himself the sins of the people and, rep and repents before the Lord, beginning his mercy for their sakes. Beautiful. Right? So Daniel takes it upon himself to, to ask forgiveness, not just for himself, for all his people. Right? Look at verses 8. 11. So starting at verse 8, it says, O Lord, shame the faith. O Lord, shame of faith belongs to us, our kings, our rulers, and to our fathers who sinned against you. To the Lord our God belong mercy and forgiveness. Whereas we fell away, we have not obeyed the voice of the Lord our God, to walk in his laws which he set before us by the hands of his servants and prophets. Yes, all Israel transgressed your law and turned aside so as not to obey your voice. Therefore, the 
Therefore the curse and the oath written in the law of Moses, the servant of God has come upon us because we sinned against you. So this is clear. This is as clear and defining sin as any passage in the scripture. St. Paul offers a summary of Daniel's words. All have sinned and fall and fallen short of the glory of God. Romans chapter 3, verse 23. Name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. I'm going to finish up reading now, Daniel. Starting at verse 12, and we're going to finish up Daniel chapter 9. So he confirmed his words, which was... Starting verse, so he confirmed his words which he spoke against us and against our judges, who judge us by bringing upon us great calamities. For under the whole heaven, such has not taken place as the things that happened in Jerusalem. As is written in the law of Moses, all these calamities came upon us, yet we have not entreated, we have not entreated the Lord our God, so as to turn from our wrongdoings and to gain insight into all the truth. Therefore the Lord washed and brought all things upon us. For the Lord our God is righteous in every work. In every work he does, though we have not obeyed his voice. So now, O Lord our God, who brought your people from the land of Egypt with a strong hand, who made yourself a name as it is this day, we have sinned and acted lawlessly. O Lord, in all your mercy, let your anger and your wrath be turned away from your city of Jerusalem, your holy mountain, Though we have sinned for in our wrongdoing and those of our fathers, Jerusalem and your people have become a disgrace among all those around us. So now, O Lord, our God, listen to the prayers of your servant in a supplication and cause your face to shine on your sanctuary, which is deserted because of you, O Lord. O my God, incline your ear and hear me and, and hear and open your eyes and see our destruction and that of your city in which your name is called upon. For not all... For not on the basis of our righteous deeds do we bring our prayer for mercy before you. But on the basis of your abundant mercy, O Lord, hear, O Lord, forgive. O Lord, give heed and act. Do not delay for your sake. O my God, for your city and your people are called by your name. Gabriel and the, and the 70 Weeks. Now, while I was still speaking, praying, declaring my sins and the sins of my people Israel and bringing my cry for mercy before the Lord, my God, concerning the holy mountain of my God. Yes, while I was speaking in prayer, then the man Gabriel, whom I saw my vision at the beginning, flew and touched me about the time of the eating sacrifice. He caused me to understand and spoke with me and said, Oh, Daniel, I have now come forth to guide you in insight. At the beginning of your prayer, the word went out. And I have come to tell you, for you are a man of desires. Therefore, consider the matter and understand the vision. Seventy weeks are determined for your people and for your holy city to finish sin, to, to, to set an end to sin, to wipe out lawlessness and atone for wrongdoings, to bring in everlasting righteousness, to seal up the vision of prophecy and to anoint the holy, the holy of holies. You shall know there and understand that from the going forth of the word to be answered and to build Jerusalem until Christ the Prince. There shall be seventy weeks and there shall be seventy weeks and sixty two weeks. There shall be seven weeks and sixty two weeks. Then the time shall return and the streets let me read that again. There shall be seven weeks and sixty two weeks. Then the time shall return and the streets and the wall shall be built. The time shall be left desolate. After the sixty-two weeks, the anointed one shall be put to death. Yet there shall be no upright judgment for him. And he shall destroy the city and the sanctuary with the prince who is coming. And they shall be cut off with a flood. And to the end of the war, which will be cut short, he shall point the city to desolations. Then shall confirm a covenant with many for one week. And in the middle of the week, my sacrifice and drink offer will drink offering will be taken away and there shall be in the temple the abomination of desolations and to the end of the time and the end of desolation shall be appointed name the father son and the holy spirit so the epistle of barnabas it's a good read in chapter 16 i was reading that last night also in the epistle of barnabas chapter 16 also talks about the spiritual temple of god right 
So in the epistle of Barnabas chapter 16, it observes that this passage was fulfilled when the temple, right, the sanctuary, verse 26, was destroyed by the Romans in AD 70. You know, we've talked about that before when I've read Matthew 24. But Barnabas also points out that a true temple remains, the body of Christ, a spiritual temple in which God dwells, right? Seventy weeks is is usually is the the interpretation of the seventy weeks to mean seventy weeks of years or four hundred and ninety years. Seventy times seven. This prophecy applies also to Jeremiah's seventy years, right? Let's look at Jeremiah chapter twenty five, verse eleven. Jeremiah 25, verse 11. All the land shall be for desolation. For 70 years they shall serve among the Gentiles. You can all see, let's see, Daniel chapter 9, verse 2. You can also see oh, Jeremiah, verse 12, and Jeremiah 25. When the 70 years are fulfilled, I will take vengeance on that nation. I will point them for perpetual destruction. Get up, and <sighs> Jeremiah 29, verse 10. So, the prophecy applies also what to Jeremiah 70 years. According to St. Hepatias, Daniel's vision concerned the time when the temple would be, re re will, would be re re rebuilt, as well as the time of the coming of the Messiah. First, the Jews returned and resumed sacrifice under the 70 years of captivity. Having mentioned, therefore, 70 weeks and having divided them in, into two parts and order, that what was spoken by him to the prophet might be better understood. He proceeded thus until the Messiah, the prince, there shall be seven weeks, which make 49 years. It was, it was in the 21st year of King Nezavir's reign that Daniel saw these things in Babylon. Hence, the 49 years added to the, 21 make up the 70 years of which the blessed Jeremiah spoke in Jeremiah chapter 25 verse 11. Second, Jesus the Messiah would be crucified in AD 30, about 490 years, 70 weeks after Xerxes commissioned to Azariah to build Jerusalem in 458 BC. And we can see second Azariah chapter 7 verses 7 and 8. As we finish up, St. Hepatitis comments on verse 27, Christ is to come, and the gospel is preached in every place. The time being then accomplished, there will remain only one week, and the last in which uh, Elias will appear, will appear in Enoch. In the midst of the abomination of desolations will be manifest, that is, the Antichrist announcing desolation of the world. And when it comes to sacrifice, and a oblation will be removed, which are now offered to God in every every place by the nations. Matthew chapter twenty-four, verse fifteen. Let's see Matthew twenty-four. So Matthew twenty-four, verse fifteen. It says, therefore, when you see the abomination of desolation spoken by Daniel, the prophet, standing in the holy place, whoever reads, let him understand. So Daniel's prophecy of the, Obama, the, 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 abomina <laughs> the abomination of desolation, Daniel chapter 9, verse 20, 23, was, was fulfilled in 70 AD. 
when the Roman general Titus entered the most holy place and had a statue of himself erected in the temple before having the temple destroyed. The Lord's phrase, when you see, indicates that many of the disciples would still be alive at that time. The words, whoever reads, let him understand, are commonly understood to be inserted by Matthew into Christ's address as an encouragement to his early Christian flock who may have witnessed this event. Right? In the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. So this will close out our study here for Daniel. Right? I'm going to add some notes in. I had a trouble pronouncing some of these words, so please, please look at my write-up. Right? I hope you all learned a little bit more about Daniel. I hope you're learning a little more as we study this. Without further ado, let's close out in prayer. Right? And um, our readings will get back on track tomorrow for Saturday. Thank you all again for Prophecy Friday. We're approaching 31 minutes, not too bad, all right? But we're going to close out prayer in the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Oh, Lord God, you spoke to your divine saving words. You illuminate the souls of sinners and comprehend what we just read. That we don't appear simply as hear spiritual words, but doers of good deeds, true pursuers of faith, having a blameless life and conduct without reproach in Christ our Lord. And to you we give glory. Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, both now and forever, endless ages. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, how be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses. Forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. But yours is the kingdom, the power, the glory, the Father, and the Son, Holy Spirit, both now and forever. In the sages. Amen. We depart in peace. In the name of the Lord, my brothers and sisters in Christ. Peace be with you all. Go in peace. Shalom, shalom. May the Lord forgive those who love us and those who hate us. Keep seeking him. Thank you all again for coming back to the studies. May the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you. Be merciful to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. In the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, both now and forever, endless ages. Amen. Jared Wesley Campbell. Good morning, good day, good evening, good afternoon, whenever and however these messages, reflections, studies find you. Remember, keep seeking him. Lay your treasures in heaven. Right. Thank you all again. Uh, once again, I, I apologize. had a little trouble pronouncing some of the words. Like I said, I'll add some of those words into my uh, write-up, so please see that. Um, without further ado... JP, JPC Spiritual Talk, never hold back, no excuses, right? It's a relationship, it's not about religion, right? You seek him, right? Do his will, his purpose. I love you all. I'm out.